Hello everyone and welcome to a special series of videos that I'm making to celebrate the 10th anniversary of one of my favorite video games of all time, which is Alan Wake, which came out in May of 2010 and has been a game that has meant a lot to me. Uh, you know, it came out around the time of my aneurysm uh, rupture and then obviously during my recovery when I was starting to play video games it was something that I owned and then I eventually came back to and played and loved thoroughly uh, and so uh, this story of Alan you know being a writer and trying to get into the you know back into writing he's had you know kind of struggling has a Stephen King kind of vibe to it and uh, you know him and his wife go to this small town called Bright Falls and he's trying to you know get away from everything get away from his life in New York City and and get back to his roots and try to write something you know a thriller a, a crime novel whatever he can trying to come up with something and he gets pulled into this big adventure that deals with this darkness that lives at the bottom of cauldron lake that calls out to alan takes his wife and sends him on an adventure that he never thought he would ever be a part of and it's really crazy it's really awesome and if you want to see my playthrough of it i will be doing a playthrough after this you know after i record all these and post them up you'll see me over on twitch so make sure you follow me there and i'll play through the game so you can kind of see and experience the story along with me and other people and it's going to be a lot of fun so make sure you do that and then also check out i think remedy studios the people who make this game who also made other stuff like max Payne, and recently they did control and i love them they do a lot of great stuff sam lake who's kind of in charge of a lot of these uh, projects Projects and and the mind behind some of them he's an awesome dude and I love Alan Wake out of all their stuff they made which are all really great games and a lot of fun but Alan Wake to me is just the best and I think a lot of people who have played the game also agree that this is just one of the strongest games out there and it's in a lot of people's top five to even top ten uh, some people for me it's in the top five of best video games of all time it's so awesome and it mixes all my favorite things like Stephen King and David Lynch you know Twin Peaks stuff uh, Twilight Zone stuff it kind of balls it all into one and does a really great job telling an amazing story that uh, still doesn't have a real conclusion I feel like American Nightmares which was like a DLC add-on to the game it told kind of a conclusion but not one that I think a lot of people are happy with. So it, we heard rumors that maybe this game that's out now called Control might have a DLC coming up that will tie it further into Alan Wake's universe and stuff too, which would be awesome. And this being the 10-year anniversary of Alan Wake, I'm so glad I could bring this to you. So what happened was about a year ago almost, I think it was about maybe 10 months ago, I got to interview uh, Philip Van, who is the director of a series called Bright Falls. And Bright Falls was a Xbox exclusive series. I think they put on YouTube as well and somewhere else online. But it was a short series, like five, six episodes that were about five, six minutes each. And they all led to, you know, they told the story about a guy named Jake in Bright Falls. And it is a prequel in many ways actually in every way it's a prequel to the game Alan Wake so what you're gonna see here today or here today is I'm gonna read questions because you know Philip I reached out to him he was really nice to take time out of his day and I'm sorry Philip if you're listening to this I should have put this up sooner but I'm kinda glad you know I had to move and I had health issues and I'm kinda glad it waited till now because now this is the official 10 year anniversary week of Alan Wake and like I said Remedy Studios they're gonna be streaming stuff all week so I'll put a link down below so you can follow the streams they're gonna be doing on on the channels that they're gonna be doing them on on Twitch and then also if you want to check out my streams I'll do mine at different times than what they're doing so that way if you want to watch both you can uh, but yeah, I'm a big, big fan of this universe. And Philip was really nice. And he said, hey, look, I can't, you know, I'm kind of shy, which I totally respect. I, I, you know, I run into that sometimes when I want to interview people. And he was like, I'm kind of shy. So I don't want to do a video interview or an audio interview. But how about you just email me some questions and then I'll respond to you. And I said, that's perfect. Yeah, I can definitely do that. But then I had to try to think of a format for this. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, it's just kind of me, you know, showing some footage from the show, obviously, you know, that uh, Philip directed. And, uh, and then you're also going to just hear me reading the answers. So you'll see like a cue card come up and it'll ask the question that I'm asking Philip and then I'll read his answer. So you're going to hear my voice throughout this. You're not going to hear Philip's, uh, but, uh, but I'm going to be reading for Philip the answers he sent me through email. So Philip, thank you again. If you're out there listening, thank you for doing this uh, with me. And so I can bring it to, you know, people who watch my channel and who may not know what Alan Wake is or what Bright Falls is. I encourage everyone out there, especially if you're an Xbox owner, go look for this series. You can watch it for free on your Xbox and then other people I think there's uploads on YouTube and stuff as well um, or you can just watch the footage as I'm you know talking over it with uh, Philip's answers so thank you all for being here and without further ado let's dive into the questions <laughs>
an ad agency called 215 in San Francisco came up with the concept and initial story and spent a month looking for directors. I was at a company called RSA and my manager there put me up for the job. I didn't think I'd get it. Brad Anderson, who was doing a show called Fringe at the time, was also pitching, among a few other directors, but I put together a montage reel of stuff that I had shot myself and a pretty exhaustive treatment, and luckily Brad had his hands full with other stuff, so I kind of lucked out. Great question. Twin Peaks more than any other reference. Culturally, we were just at the start of the renewed interest and love for that series. No one was making anything based on it yet, unlike now, where it feels like pretty much every show somehow references it. Not to mention the reboot itself. Bright Falls felt like an ideal way into an uncanny aesthetic and tone. Also, Igmar Bergman's persona. We love the cutting style in those montages. He felt like an everyman, but also had an intensity and darkness that we all liked. In his audition, he could play innocent and guilty at the same time, which was compelling. We found him through Mary Verneau, our incredible casting director. We spent a couple of weeks scouting around Oregon and Southern Washington. I'm from Oregon, so it was literally in my own backyard. Before that, I wrote with Matt Bunnell and Nate Abel for about two weeks in San Francisco. Then another art director named Ben Wolin joined our production. They basically functioned like showrunners. Matt had trained as a copywriter and was the most hands-on in Final Draft. We co-wrote all the episodes together and fleshed out the initial concept. They're very talented, creative, and have a pitch-black sense of humor, so it was a pretty fluid process. We also had an incredible producer named Joyce Chen, who was very much a part of the creative team and added a lot of practicality and creativity. I believe we shot the whole thing in a week. It was about 40 to 50 minutes worth of content, so it was like shooting half a feature in that amount of time. The schedule was as ambitious as it gets, but we made it out alive. We cut at a place called Beast in San Francisco. The edit was divided between three editors, Connor T. McDonald, Nikki Winnig, and Brian Lagerhausen. I stayed in San Francisco and worked with Matt, Joyce, Nate, and Ben at Beast for the whole thing, which took about a month. Whoa, I didn't order this. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Yes, definitely. I learned a lot about jump scares, discontinuity in the edit, and the power of sound design, among a bunch of other things. I've used these techniques we figured out in different commercials and narrative works since, but only when they fit the concept. From early on, Matt and I talked about Jake's hallucinations. We wanted to cut between quiet, lulling moments that almost put you in a trance, and loud, jarring ones that snap you out of it. We understood the shock value of that technique, but we were also really trying to ground it in Jake's psychology. We wanted the audience to experience what it was like to get hit by a bunch of fractured pieces of memories all at once. How confusing and terrifying that could be. We explored a few CG ways to do it, but they came across really corny. So we settled on using the edit to create the effect. And that's where we took inspiration from older art house films like Persona. Images cut together out of context and narrative order can have a really eerie feeling. At its most commercial, you get something like the video in The Ring, but we wanted to go a little deeper than that. Our memories normally hit us out of order, 
and for very little reason, especially the bad ones. So the shoot and edit became kind of an exploration of trauma and how it affects our memories and how that in turn affects our sense of identity. Definitely, I would return to that universe in a heartbeat. My writing partner Chris Goodwin and I penned a script that was on the blacklist. It's called To the Extreme, and it's a biopic about Vanilla Ice. I know that sounds worlds away from Bright Falls, but there are actually some similarities. We're also on a couple of other projects, but I probably shouldn't mention those until word's out. You bet. Thank you, Seek. And thank you again, Philip, for taking time to answer those questions. And we have more. Philip was really gracious and said, hey, besides these first 10 questions, why don't we do a couple other ones that dive deeper into each specific episode of Bright Falls? And I was like, really? You're up for that? And he said, yes. So we do have more episodes of this coming up. They're going to be much shorter episodes, though. This is the bulk of the interview here. Uh, but the ones coming up that I'll post you know, over the next couple days to, again, celebrating the whole week that is the 10-year anniversary of Alan Wake, I'll put up an episode a day until we get through all of them. I think there's about five or six episodes that we'll do left, and it's each specific episode of Bright Falls, and they're going to be about five-minute videos. So hopefully you guys enjoy those. Those will be going up after this. And let me know down in the comments what you think of this. Uh, you know, did I do okay for a format like this? It was tough because I was like, all right, he, you know, answered through email, so how do I get this information to my viewers, but also still bring my personality into it as well and, you know, get kind of my visual sense across too. So hopefully the setup you liked, the video you liked, and uh, hopefully the audio turned out okay because I'm trying a new mic and stuff so hopefully everything works out all right and again let me know what you think down below i love this series personally and uh, hopefully you guys have seen it and if you haven't go check it out now and come back here and let your comments be known down below what do you think of philip's work i think he did a great job and we have more of it to explore in upcoming episodes thanks so much for being here make sure you stay subscribed so you don't miss out on the upcoming episodes see you in the future peace <laughs>